We're at the Brookside Nature Center in Wheaton in Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, we're with uh, Maddie Koenig, who is with Montgomery Parks. We're here to talk about and see flying squirrels. Who knew that flying squirrels were even a thing in Montgomery County? You've known for a while. I've known for a while, absolutely. So um, here at Brookside Nature Center, one of our primary goals is to educate and introduce visitors and residents of Montgomery County to the plants and animals that we share our neighborhoods with. Our flying squirrel programs, which we hold every Friday evening, thanks to our lovely volunteers, um, Nick and Phyllis, introduce folks to our southern flying squirrels. When they're sitting, the flap of skin folds up, as the, the, the kids were noticing. When it's time to fly, they stretch out, and they end up looking like flying handkerchiefs. I'm Nick Hughes. I'm a volunteer naturalist here. I'm Phyllis Robinson. I'm a volunteer here. The first one I ever saw was here, actually. I remember grabbing Nick and saying, oh my god, it's a blind squirrel. I thought they were endangered. The first thing we do is we put food out. The idea of the food is to provide a bribe so the squirrels will congregate in a place where we can all see them and we can teach about them. This is kind of cheating for education purposes. And these are nocturnal animals. This they is their nocturnal. morning fix. So um, sunset is as soon as we put the food out because we don't want the daytime eat animals eating at first. So sunsets when they wake up. So this is actually breakfast for them. So they're not actually. They, they, these are not bats. Right. Bats will act. You, you would see flapping. These guys don't flap. What they've got is between their uh, forepaw and the backbone is a flap of skin. It's called a patagium. This ends up being the flight surface. This is the inspiration for the human flight suits. Humans aren't nearly as good as these guys. There we go. So as they fly, they can go flat, straight flight. They can, and that'll flip. And they, when they make a right hand turn, it's a sudden right hand turn. When they make a 180 degree, it's a sudden, there isn't not this big slow gliding thing. What is it that, that intensely draws the both of you to the flying squirrel into this program? First, they're cute. And you can't get over that. I, I, everybody who comes through agrees that they are cute, and they are. They are also great ambassadors for teaching about helping preserve the forest, helping preserve our natural world. Um, if people uh, see and learn about these endearing little guys and realize that we need to have a habitat for them, they're more likely to help preserve that habitat. After five years of doing this, I still get a lot of joy out of seeing people excited about learning about these little animals. Not only do they exist here, they're almost equal in numbers to the common gray squirrel that we see all over the Absolutely. place. Absolutely. Um, from what I've heard, there is for every one gray squirrel that you see, there is a southern flying squirrel out there in the forest. So if you've got big trees in your neighborhood, chances are you've got southern flying squirrels. We just don't get the opportunity to see them very often because they are nocturnal animals. So they're out when we're sleeping and they're up in the treetops. That's where they spend most of their time. That's where they're safe from other animals. It's where they find their food. They don't have much of a reason to come down to the ground where we are. And what we want people to know most about flying squirrels is what they need to survive, right? And that, like I said earlier, is forest and parkland. So if folks are interested in supporting flying squirrels and coming out to see them on a Friday night here at Brookside Nature Center, they have yeah. to know that squirrels need forest, right? Squirrels need parks just as much as people do. You know, I think that is uh, quite a take on the state of humanity, hmm. that the flying squirrels do not choose to come down to where we are. Why would they? You know, it's so comfortable up in their treehouse yeah. condos. But let me just yeah. underscore. No, we point see what's going on. No, we, we see their social media. Yeah, not no, coming down there. That. And we're only going to exist at night. We yeah. don't want any part of what y'all are doing <laughs> during the day. But uh, I want to underscore the point that she said there is that the flying squirrels in Montgomery County and, and they exist all over the East Coast from from Maine on down to like South Carolina. They are equal in number to the common gray squirrels that we see out there. Wow. So there are flying squirrels everywhere. They're in our yards, they're in Rock Creek Park, they're, they're all over the place. We just don't see them because they're at night. Now, one of the reasons we were able to see them there uh -huh. in that environment is obviously they had the food in the tree, so they were coming down and checking that out. But uh, you'll see during some parts of, that, parts of that story, there was a red light uh -huh. that was shining on the squirrels. And they do that intentionally, because it's like you shine a flashlight on them, you know, they're up in their eyes, that they're gonna be distracted, they're gonna go away. They can't see that wavelength of the red color. So they were using the red light to be able to highlight them. We had another special visitor there at uh, the Brookside uh, Nature Center, a massive raccoon. It was 
the, the flying squirrels went away. The raccoon comes up the tree to go to get the bird seed yeah. that came out. Everyone's like, what do y'all do? What are you doing here? Get, <laughs> get, the, get out of here. We want the squirrels. Uh, what speciesism right there? Oh, this is about speciesism. the squirrel. I can't, I can't, you can't get any raccoon can't get any love. People paid to see the squirrels. Listen, if you uh, know about some great programs going on in your area, parks, anything cool, People, businesses, whatever. I want to hear about it. I want to tell your story. Reach out to me, alongo, wsni.com. And by the way, no more freebies. Reese and I are doing this for y'all. You got to follow us on social media. Please That's the do. only way we get paid. We don't do this for a paycheck. And you know what? Raccoon, hit me up. I'm here for the underserved communities. <laughs>